Hello, little learners. Welcome back to Camp Read A Lot, the place where we read books, sing songs, and keep the learning going all summer long. My name is Miss Lara. Can you tell me your name? I'm so grateful that you made it back this morning. Should we start our day off with a song? I have my friend here, Maria the Mail Person. Ready, Maria? Okay, let's sing our song. It goes like this. Good morning, good morning, it's a sunshine kind of day. Come join Miss Lara for some learning and some play. Will we sing a song? Of course we will. Make our brains strong, like super strong. So come along. Yes, come on friends for some learning and some play. Hello Jello, what's up Buttercup? We have so much to do, I'm glad that you are up. That's right, Miss Maria, I'm gonna put you back here. I am so glad that you are up today, boys and girls. Wipe the sleep from your eyes, get a good stretch, because we have so much to do today. We're gonna start our day today with a little song called The Feelings Hokey Pokey. And I'm gonna try to put some music on. Fingers crossed that it works. And then we're going to read a book, Stella Luna. Yesterday we watched the video story and today I'm gonna read it live. So if you have your copy, bring it so you can read it with me. Then we're gonna move into a project. We're gonna make a bat using our hand prints. Ooh, and this bat flies and finds beginning sounds. So I hope that you're excited about our day. Now we're gonna get started with a little dancing. We're gonna learn about our feelings. For this, you're gonna need to know how to make a happy face, a sad face, a mad face, a worried face, and a tired face. So get your faces on. Find a nice open space for you to dance. I'm gonna put the music on and we're gonna dance together to the feelings hokey pokey. Are you ready? Here we go. You put your happy face in, you put your happy face out, you put your happy face in, and say woohoo with the shout. You do the feeling so keep poking, turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your sad face in, you put your sad face out, you put your sad face in, and you cry your sad face out. You do the feeling so keep poking, turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You do the feeling hokey pokey. You do the feeling hokey pokey. You do the feeling hokey pokey. That's what it's all about. Get your mad face ready. Mad face in. You put your mad face out. You put your mad face in. And you stomp your angries out. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your worried face in, you put your worried face out. Put your worried face in, and you're scared and full of doubt. You do the feeling hokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You do the feeling hokey. Do the feeling hokey pokey. You do the feeling hokey pokey. That's what it's all about. You put your tired face in, put your tired face out. You put your tired face in, and you yawn your sleepies out. You do the feeling hokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your love face in, you put your love face out. Put your love face in, and you say I love you with a shout. You do the feeling hokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You do the feeling hokey pokey. You do the feeling hokey pokey. You do the feeling hokey pokey. That's what it's all about. So I hope that you enjoyed that song and a little bit of movement. Remember to start your day off with how you're feeling with the song or by looking in the mirror. Right now, I think I hear, let's see. Ooh, we got some mail from Miss Maria. Let's see. 
Here we go. Now remember, when we read our meal, we start at the left and go to the right. Let's sing our song. This is the left. This is the right. When we read, we start at the left and go to the right. Here's what the letter says. Dear Miss Lara, you will never believe it. Oh no, what could it be? I found my mother. She fed me the most delicious fruit. Who could be writing this letter? Was there a character who was searching for their mother and ate delicious fruit? Well, let's see. I will never have to eat a grasshopper again. I love being a bat. Love Stella Luna. That's our character, right? And actually, Miss Maria dropped off a copy of Stella Luna, the book. Yesterday, we watched the video story. Now, if you remember the book Stella Luna, it was about a bat who had to learn to be a bird to survive, but then found his true or her true bat self. So we're going to read Stella Luna together. I'll tell you, it's a little bit of a longer book, so settle in, grab a snack as we read Stella Luna by author Janelle Cannon. The author writes the words of the story. Let's see. Ooh, look. On the inside, there's even a picture of what Stella Luna loves to eat. Mingos, yum. I'm gonna wanna eat mingos all week because of Stella Luna. Here we go. In a warm, sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. So there she is. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Ah! Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Now think about a time when you've wet paper. See how limp they go? Do you think she can fly? Hmm. Down, down, she went faster and faster into the forest below. What will happen? Oh, I'm nervous. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Can you tremble? To tremble means to kind of shake like this. Try it. Let's see. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down, again she dropped. Now, do you remember why she couldn't fly? Her wings were limp as wet paper, right? Flump! Stella Luna landed head first in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below. When you clamber, it means you kind of climb up like this. Can you try it? Clamber up. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flip. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth, and plop, and dropped a big green grasshopper. There she is, eating the green grasshopper. Oh, I wonder. She must have been pretty hungry. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. That's what bats do. Once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. 
When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! She cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clamored back into the nest. But Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. Stop. You're teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules in this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. Now is Stella Luna a bird? No. I wonder how she's feeling now. Let's keep going and reading on. All the babies grew up quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip Flitter Flap and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip Flitter and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. When you land gracefully somewhere, that means you don't trip and fall. Look at those pictures. Stella Luna did not land gracefully on the branch. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, mourned Flitter. We had better go home, or we will get lost in the dark. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. <sighs> I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Who could it be? Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumb, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered round to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b bugs gasped one. You slept at night, said another. How very strange. Wait, wait, let me look at this child, a bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked, sniffing Stella Luna's fur. To sniff means to smell. Can you sniff? <laughs> she whispered, you are Stella Luna. You are my baby. Look, there's Stella Luna. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived. Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's a nightmare, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the dead blue sky. She could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Look at that. Now I want you to ask your family why bats are able to see at night and birds are not. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live. Stella Luna stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap, her bird friends. 
The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, she said. Okay, let's go. And the birds flew among the bats. I feel upside down here, said the birds. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said. We will fly at night. Now, what do you think is going to happen when the birds try to fly at night? Are they like bats? Can they see at night? Hmm. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, held Flitter. I shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped down, grabbed her friends in the air, and she lifted them to a tree. And the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed, I wish you could see in the dark too. They said, we wish you could land on your feet. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike? And how can we feel so different and be so much alike? I think it's quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends and that's a fact. So here they are being friends. And if you read this book, there are some bat facts that you might want to check out with your family in the back. So what do you think? Stella Luna learned to be her true bat self. She didn't want to be a bird, right? And she couldn't be a bird. I love reading stories to you boys and girls, but what I can't wait for is for you to read stories to me. So we're going to practice our beginning sounds so that you learn to take apart the sounds and words so that you can read books like I do. Okay, so here is our sound. It's the letter B and it makes a B sound. Let's find a sound, a sound, a sound. Let's find the first sound in a word. So let's look at some of our pictures here. I have mango, mm, mango. Does mango say b at the beginning? Mango, no. If it did, it'd say, it would say bingo. That's not it. How about branch? Branch, b, branch. Does it say b at the beginning? Branch. Yes, we're going to put it right up here with our B. How about this picture? Nest. Nest. Does it say B at the beginning? No, it says mm, nest. If it did say B, it would be best. Let's see. How about this picture? What is this? It's a picture of our bird, just like our bat friends had bird friends. Bird. B. Bird. Does it say b at the beginning? It does. Bird starts with b. I'm going to put it up here. Ooh, how about this one? This is an actual picture of a fruit bat. And it's pretty large. Look at its wingspan. Bat. Does bat say b at the beginning? B at. See, it does. Bat starts with b. Let's do one more. Grasshopper, g, grasshopper, g, g. Does that say b, b? No. If it did, it would say grasshopper. That's not what it says. Okay, so let's review our words that start with b. We have branch, bird, and bat. They all say b. Now, of course, I love to leave you with the project so that you can extend the learning at home. So we're going to make something that starts with the B right now, a bat using our handprints. So let's go to the project, please. Here we go. Bat. Here is what our finished project is going to look like. It's going to be a little hanging bat like this. And can you see my handprints are the wings? Okay, for this project, you're going to need some brown paper, some white paper, black paper, and some yarn if you want it to hang. And then at the end, after we make it, I'll show you a trick for how to make it a learning activity using beginning sounds. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have some clean hands. And because we're a little running out of time, I'm going to fold my paper in half. Now you remember, half means make it into two parts. 
So then I'm going to take my hand, clean hand, and I'm going to put it right on my paper and trace it. Trace means I'm going to go around. So here we go, around, like this. There we go. There. I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's traced. Looks like that. Then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to put the thumb in the thumb spot and put three fingers on the lower spot. Use your helper hand to hold the paper and you're going to cut around. Now because you folded your paper in half, when you cut your hand out, you're actually going to have how many? Two, that's right. That's a little shortcut to make it quicker. I go around all these curves. This is hard. Sometimes when I cut like this, when I'm really tired or I'm really in a hurry, I end up with spaghetti fingers, very thin ones, because I cut very thin along the curves. All right, here we go. Then we're gonna cut around, save our scraps for another project, of course. And here we go, we have our wings. Look at that. Doo, 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 wings. So we're going to set those aside. What else do we need for our bat? Let's take a look. We have our wings. We're going to need our head. Now what shape do you notice the head is? It's a circle. So we're going to make our circle. Now you can do the circle freehand, meaning you're just going to cut and take your scissors to it, or you can draw it on. You can even use tape like this to kind of trace the circle, a cup, a bowl. That's what I'm gonna do, because I kind of want a very round circle. I don't want an oval head today. I'm gonna cut it the same way, like this. All around, all around. There we are. And of course, save my scraps for later. And now is when I'm gonna need some glue. Now you can use glue stick or just regular glue and kind of glue your head here to the middle, to the center. Oh, come on, glue. All right, here we go. Glue it up, put it there. Dot, dot, not a lot, because then it just takes forever to dry. And here's what it's looking like. Now, what else is it missing? Some bat ears? Okay, let's make those very quickly. I'm gonna cut a rectangle piece of brown Fold it in half and cut out some ears, like a curve. They look almost like a U, the letter U. Is that, let's see, letter U. I haven't met too many people whose name starts with the letter U. Maybe that's U. All right, then I need, what, some eyes. Let's make some eyes very quickly and then we'll I'll show you how you can use this to practice your beginning sounds. Because of course, it's always fun to do some crafts. But after you're done with the craft, how can you use them for learning? See, here you're learning how to you know, create something, use glue, cut with scissors. You can take it to a reading skill just with a little tweak. All right, I'm gonna make some eyes, a nose, and a little mouth, and show you what it's looking like so far. <laughs> Here's my little bat. And of course, you can always attach a yarn with some tape that I have here and have it hanging. Now to make this a beginning sound bat, once you're through and you're done flying it around, because that's what I would wanna do first, you can actually go around your house and think, I'm gonna find all the things in my house that start with B. So I'm gonna go, ooh, how about my bed? And then you're gonna fly your bat to your bed. How about the bathroom? Then you're gonna fly your bat to the bathroom. Things like that. So I hope that you try this activity out. Right now, it looks like it's time for us to sing our goodbye song. So let me get my letter cards out and we'll sing together. Ready? A, B, See you later, D, E, F, G, I'm gonna miss ya, H, I have to go now, J, K, 
bye bye now. L M N. Oh, I had a good time. P Q. Are you gonna miss me? S T. You are my best friend, and you are. V B W X Y and Z. That's right. We've come to the end of our time together today. So I will see you tomorrow. Now, boys and girls, tomorrow we're going to sing our Feelings Hokey Pokey song again. So I hope that you're ready to dance and sing with me. And we're going to read another book about a little girl who's trying to find her true self. She goes to school not matching at all. And kids are making fun of her. Oh, no, I hope she solves her problem. So join me tomorrow for some more reading fun. Until then, big smooch. Goodbye.